guys carter here have another sword review for you today it is on this ronin katana european double fullard long sword i'm just going to go over the basic stats of this guy what i think about it if i think you should buy it maybe or i guess you'll make that determination yourself um, but just talk a little bit about this sword I believe I'm going to post some cutting footage before this particular portion of the review kind of kicks off. Um, so I had a lot of fun cutting with this actually. And I'll touch a little bit more on that after I go over the basic stats. So first off, basic stats. So this is a, a large sword, hence the name long sword. Um, it's not super huge, but it's uh, 48 inches overall, eight inch handle. So you get plenty of space there for both hands, which is how I'd recommend using this sword. Um, very, very nice stuff. The materials used on this, the blade is 1075 high carbon steel. So nothing particularly amazing, but definitely a worthy steel that is, uh, is strong. It'll hold its edge decently well. Um, should have plenty of flex to it, so it shouldn't break or snap. Um, a lot of this, of course, depends on the heat treat, but uh, the steel itself is very adequate decent steel for sword in this price point. No complaints there. Uh, the fittings, however, are stainless steel, which is a bit of a disappointment. Um, the plus side to that is that it's not really going to rust on you. That includes the pommel and the cross guard. Downside is if you do any sort of significant um, hits on this, it's probably going to snap off. It's not going to bend like mild steel would. Uh, the other minor downside is if you wanted to do any bluing or anything, you wouldn't be able to do that kind of as is. Of course, you could always sand it, kind of finish it that way, but you're not really going to be able to change the color of it through through bluing. Uh, but more importantly, it's just the durability of it isn't going to be super high. So I would recommend this for kind of basic cutting to Tommy mats, noodles like I did, water, jugs, training, things like that. Um, but it's not really going to be a good uh, heavy duty you know, beat the crap out of it type sword, or at least without breaking these um, quillins off. So yeah, grip, eight inch grip, like I said before, uh, wood core, cord wrapped, and then leather bound, right? Pretty standard. However, there are a couple things worth noting on this particular handle right here. The cord wrapping is a very thick cord. It is not your kind of typical cord that you would see on a high-end sword. You can see how that reverberates there. Um, much thicker cord, so your purchase is not quite as grippy as, uh, say, your, your kind of smaller cord wrap here. Uh, definitely not as grippy. However, it didn't cause a problem for my cutting. Um, my hands were dry. I wasn't particularly sweaty. It wasn't raining. You know, it wasn't any blood of my enemies on my hands, so... You know, didn't cause any issues, but something worth noting, I would prefer this to be kind of the standard smaller cord. I don't really like this really big, thick cord here. The other downside is it makes it very chunky. You can see how chunky that handle is. Um, I've got big hands, so it wasn't too much of an issue for me, but it just kind of feels off and it feels, you know, um, that's what I'm looking for. It, it just feels kind of cumbersome. Um, because it's so so big it is a wasted handle the wasting happens pretty far down though I'd prefer it to be maybe about there would be ideal for me um, but it does allow you to kind of do a half pommel half grip with this hand or I guess for me it would actually be that hand and then a full grip up at the top where you could kind of position more towards the guard or down a little bit however there is a little extra space here and I prefer this come up a little bit but Works just fine to put your hand around this fishtail pommel right there. It is sold as and marketed as peened, and it does seem like it's peened. However, you cannot see any remnants of that peen on the pommel there. So I assume it's just they got such a perfect fit, and then they ground that down, smoothed it out that you can't see that peen at all. You typically only see that on really high-end swords. So it's pretty cool that they were able to do that here. Um, normally that's, you know, like I said, something reserved for something far more expensive. The gap in the cross guard and the blade is pretty minimal. Um, side to side, width wise, there's really none. 
some of the best I've seen on production swords. And then you've got a little bit on the side, obviously where the fullers are, you're gonna get some gaps. Uh, but even on the flats on this side, there is a little bit of gap, but definitely within the realm of what you would expect at a sword at this price point. Uh, so not complaining at all. Now moving on to the blade, 1075 steel, like I mentioned, beautiful double fullers. That's the primary reason why I bought this is because of the double fullers. I thought it looked pretty cool. They terminate almost at the same spot, maybe a couple centimeters off from ending at the exact right spot. And then the blade kind of flattens out to a nice kind of slicing design right there. The sharpness um, is pretty, pretty good. It's about the sharpest probably production sword I have. Uh, compared to like um, Hanway and things like that. This one is a little bit sharper. It's still definitely not hair shaving sharp or, you know, newspaper, paper shaving sharp, but adequate, serviceable, cut noodles pretty well. The heft of the blade also helped with the noodles um, as well as the, uh, the great two-handed grip on here. Really lets you kind of slice into those and uh, did pretty good. Overall weight on this sword, I forgot to mention that, this is on the heavier side. Even though it's longer and larger, it's still kind of heavier than what you'd expect. It's a little over three and a half pounds. Um, not difficult for me to maneuver it. It's still pretty maneuverable, but it is heavier. Point of balance is pretty far out there. It's about six and a half inches, six inches. Um, so, you know, obviously that's not completely crazy for such a long blade, but um, it is a little bit further out there than most would probably like. Um, for something this size, I would think five inches would probably be about a good place for the balance point. Um, so, yeah, let's go to uh, scabbard. Not a, not a ton to talk about the scabbard here. Pretty standard. Um, I kind of view it as just sword protection for free, wood core, leather wrapped, or at least they, they say it's leather wrapped. It doesn't quite feel like real leather. It kind of feels like faux leather but I, I don't have anywhere to verify that. They say it's leather, so I'm gonna have to stick with that, um, but it does kind of not seem like leather. Metal shape, very standard. Leather harness and belt, low quality leather. However, it is thick enough. It's, it should be durable, should be usable. And as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's a free add-on to, uh, to buying the sword. So I'm not complaining at all. Fit into the scabbard is actually really, really good. Can see how it really snugs in there and then doesn't shake out in fact i can't even can't even get it to shake out at all but it still it pulls out very very easily no rattle or at least none to really none to really speak of so the price point on this is just a little over 300 dollars, and as far as i'm concerned it is 100 percent well worth it it's a blast to cut with it's a blast to swing around it's a nice big sword Yes, there are some things that I think they could improve upon, namely this grip here. Um, if they were to change this grip, that would be huge. If this was mild steel, and then if they shaved maybe half a pound off of this, it would be a top contender for way better than for the money. You know, what I'm trying to say, I, I can't talk. <laughs> It would be on uh, the top tier of like best sword for the money. But as it stands, it's still an excellent value. Still a really good sword. Overall quality is excellent. Um, even the finishing. Uh, this is one of the few blades where I really didn't do any refinishing on the blade itself. There are some minor, minor scuffs, but nothing that bothered me enough to mess with. Uh, so that's a plus. It is made in China. And it's been my experience that Chinese made blades tend to just be better quality, especially on the finish category. Um, than Indian made ones, and that's just what I've noticed. So that's it, guys. Review on the Rona Katana Euro model. I forget the number, I'll put it in the description.